So in this next video, in our exploration of the local Langlands program, um, I'm going to explain some of the stuff that appears on the Galois side, so to speak. Uh, so what I mean by that is, well, I'm only going to explain some of it uh, because the uh, the the so-called uh, L group uh, th that we're going to see, I mean, uh, the or the Langlands dual group. Um, I should say, well, let me just let me just write something down. So so um, last time we talked about how there's this, uh, you know, proposed Langlands reciprocity map um, that should, uh, I mean, it's going to satisfy some conditions, but it basically maps um, irreducible representations of connected reductive algebraic groups over a piadic uh, local field. Uh, to this group and I, I, I to a, a group homomorphism. I didn't define this last time, uh, but a group homomorphism between these two groups. Uh, one, uh, this this uh, domain is called the Vedelin group, which is what I'm going to focus on in this video. And the other factor is the Langlands uh, dual group or the Lang Langlands L group. Uh, so I'm not really going to dive into the uh, the L group um, in this video, or not even for you know, some time because its proper definition actually requires um, explaining the uh, the general structure of connected reductive algebraic groups um, and, and talking about Lie algebras and whatnot. So we're going to have to wait. I'll just tell you for now, I think I mentioned last time that it is, I'm going to use a different notation, this, this check, G check. I think it's better because when you're doing this Langland stuff, there's a whole bunch of hats there's a hat for the proof for a ring and a hat for the uh, Poinciagin dual and, and, and hats galore. Uh, there's too many hats. So, so it's a semi-direct product of this. And I think sometimes people will write it as a semi-direct product with the full Galois group, but you can actually write it as a semi-direct product with uh, something called the V group. So not to be confused with the version that has a check on it, which we're going to talk about in this video, but we are going to talk about both. Uh, so this is just the V group, which is fine because as we're going to see, this is a, a dense subgroup of this. So uh, in some sense, it's a simplification of, of the datum in, in this full Galois group. So this video, we're just going to focus on, on what this group uh, looks like. And maybe I'll just say something uh, quickly to, to put your mind at ease. It, it turns out that the uh, Langlands parameters, if we're, if we're working with GLNF, uh, it turns out that G uh, check ends up being GLNC. And uh, perhaps next time I'll give you a, just a list of all the G checks for you given standard G, and then you'll have an intuitive notion of, of what it is. And uh, you can sort of ride on that until we get to the actual definition. And it turns out that actually the, the Langlands parameters in this case, basically I'll just land in the G check factor. That is they're, they're trivial on the Galois factor. And so uh, for the case of GLN, a Langlands parameter actually becomes an, an honest to goodness uh, representation of a group, complex representation of a group. So that's sort of nice in which we're, we're you know, thinking about this world, the sort of tagline version of, of Langlands is that it connects Galois representations to automorphic uh, representations. So uh, moving along in our description of the Vey de Lean group and, and the Vey group uh, first, we need to talk a little bit about number theory and field theory. So it turns out that if you have an extension of piadic fields, and a similar thing happens in, in the uh, global theory, uh, it turns out that we have our, our ring of integers uh, in both these cases, again, mimicking, mimicking the, uh, the global theory. So I'm going to have some extension of fields. Uh, I'm going to have a ring of integers for my field F. Um, and the integral closure of my field F in the ring of integers, uh, rather the integral closure of the, of the ring of integers of F in K is going to be the ring of integers for, uh, oh, did I write uh, K? Yes, I'm going to write big K here. 
hopefully I won't make that mistake again. And it turns out, uh, so there's a unique, in, in these rings of integers, there's a unique uh, maximal ideal. So it turns out that the maximal ideal here also sits above uh, the maximal ideal of F. And being maximal, so it turns out because these things sort of sit in, inside of each other nicely, uh, it turns out that the residue field, so the, the, the ring of integers uh, modulo this, sometimes it's written as, as kappa sub k, this is a field extension of the residue field, as we call it, uh, of, of this ring here. So we'll write that as kappa, oh, that's hard to read, uh, but kappa, kappa f. And uh, it turns out then uh, that if you also trace through how you, you know the definition of the ring of integers and how the uh, the automorphisms of the Galois group behave, it turns out that this Galois group you can naturally realize um, each element of this Galois group as an element of the Galois group of of this field extension. So really. What this means is it's it's the Galois group of uh, f uh, of of the finite field. So so these always turn out to be finite fields. So this is going to be something like f. Uh, I could be saying something slightly wrong here, but it's going to be something like f q f q to the n, uh, where n is the degree of the extension of of k over f. And so we get this uh, surjective map. Um, well. Yeah, yeah, we got this uh, surjective map here in general. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space because I'm going to write something in a moment. And we define the inertia uh, subgroup. So we call this the inertia subgroup of this extension is simply uh, defined to be the kernel of this map. OK, great. And uh, so what you might know from uh, just ordinary, you know, a first pass at field theory is that uh, this group, the, the finite Galois group, is generated uh, by the so-called uh, Frobenius um, automorphism. So I guess uh, uh, Q itself is a, a power of uh, P for, for a fixed uh, prime P, our, our p-adic field. Uh, and so uh, these these groups are actually generated by by the Frobenius automorphism, which is which is what allows you to see these groups as uh, just isomorphic to the integers mod n for for an appropriate n. And uh, it turns out now that uh, what we're going to do is take uh, the inverse limit of of all of these. So in general, uh, if you don't know this, the the Galois group. Uh, of the algebraic closure is actually defined to be uh, the inverse limit over all of these uh, finite extensions. So uh, what I'm what I'm going to do is is take this this inverse limit across this you know this whole diagram, and what I end up with here I'll have my my Galois group f bar of the algebraic closure. Uh, here, what I'll end up with is it turns out that uh, each of these, each of the representations of the corresponding residue fields corresponds to something called an unramified extension of, of this base field F. And uh, this video is already going to be too long, I can tell, so I'm not going to go into exactly what that means. Uh, but, but Suffice it to, to, to say, this ends up giving us something called the, the Galois group of, of the maximal unramified extension of F. So we still have a, a surjection onto here. Uh, here's an isomorphism. And it, I mean, in turn, these things, speaking of, of too many hats, uh, is isomorphic to the, the aforementioned proofer ring, uh, which is. I mean, it, it's uh, so another definition, it's just the inverse limit of Z mod N over all N, which ends up being the product of all the uh, p-adic integers. <sighs> okay, that was a lot. And, uh, but, but we have to keep going if, if we're gonna finish defining this group today. 
and sitting inside the uh, the the proof of ring, of course. I mean, you you can see this because there's a copy of of the integers sitting inside each piadic integer. So then there's a copy of the integers sitting inside this whole uh, product in a natural sort of way. Uh, so we have a copy of the integers here. Uh, and I'm going to define uh, the, so the inertia group IS. So, so now there's just dependence on S because we're taking this over the algebraic uh, uh, closure. Okay, technically, I guess there could be a choice of, of algebraic closure involved, um, but it doesn't matter for our purposes. And uh, now in this story, We'll go red for the next level down. So, so this group we've seen is, is isomorphic to uh, Z hat. And uh, here we're gonna take Z, so it naturally includes into here. And we're going to take, going to erase this just to give us a little bit of room. Over here, I'm going to just take equality, IF, and I'm now going to define the V group to be uh, the inverse image, if, if, if I call this you know, pi for this uh, surjection, this is going to be defined as the inverse image of the integers as they sit inside uh, this proof or ring here. And we get this uh, commutative diagram. And an important thing to note is that we make a little switch of topology here, which admittedly I don't totally understand. But uh, if you if you look at at the integers as they sit inside the the, the proof or ring, uh, the topology is kind of weird. And so what one does when we're making the sequence is instead of just giving this the subspace topology, uh, we give this the discrete topology, and then we topologize the uh, the V group by making two demands on it. One, of course, we're going to demand that uh, pi uh, be a continuous map uh, between these two groups. But we're also going to demand that uh, IF is homeomorphic uh, to the inverse image of, of zero here. And that's it. So that's the, that's the definition of the V group. And uh, I know it is not so in, enlightening to define things just in terms of these abstract uh, sequences. So one way that uh, we, can, we can sort of visualize uh, the V group a bit nicer is that it turns out the V group, um, so returning back, I, I mentioned this, this Frobenius automorphism. So this lifts to uh, a choice of Frobenius automorphism in this maximal unramified uh, extension. And uh, in turn, that ends up uh, being what sort of generates this copy of Z uh, living inside this Galois group here. And so, uh, I mean, this comes out of, of tracing through, through the sequence, but essentially the, uh, the V group, it looks like the group which is generated by arbitrary uh, integer powers of Frobenius times uh, something in the inertia group. So that might give you a better idea of a, a hands-on description of it. Um, okay, great. So that is the V group, which is important. Uh, but now <laughs> we do the strange sort of thing. And uh, we define the Vedelin group, so WF prime. This is going to be the V group, uh, but now we take a, a, a semi-direct product with a copy of SL2C. Uh, there is some sort of explanation as, as to why uh, this is something worth looking at. And in fact, we'll see later on that uh, sometimes we tack on an extra copy of SL2C because, uh, hey, why not? And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what the, the, the action is here. So um, I guess I'll just briefly mention uh, by the result, by results of, of local class field theory, the uh, for our piadic field, uh, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a way to match up characters of, of the piadic field and, uh, and characters of the V group. And so, um, 
oftentimes I'll probably do this throughout the, this mini series is, is I'll sort of use abusive notation where I'll, I'll switch between, you know, the actual piatic norm of this field um, and what I sometimes write as new uh, for, uh, well, sometimes I'll write it as new, but the, uh, for now I'm going to write new uh, to be that character that cons uh, corresponds through local class field theory to the, the piatic uh, metric. And so uh, what is the action of this semi-direct product here? Well, um, a, a copy, uh, so say we have Z here, um, it, it, we're going to have uh, th this conjugation action uh, such that it acts by this uh, character on that element of the V group times Z in SL2C. Okay, so finally, uh, just to sort of reiterate, so so these definitions are complicated, and and perhaps I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but we can make a long way without actually having to to get into the nitty ditty nitty gritty details about what these things uh, actually look like. Um, uh, but we will we will come back and talk more about the structure theory. In, in in fact, maybe I should spend the next video talking more about the structure theory of these things. Uh, we'll see what I feel like doing. See how much uh, studying I want to do before that video. Uh, so just to reiterate, the thing that we're interested in are these G, uh, what I was calling G hat last time, but now I prefer to call them G check, equivalence classes of group homomorphisms between this weird uh, semi-direct product and another weird semi-direct direct product uh, and and somehow this has uh, I mean, now we can see a little bit more clearly through this the relationship that this has with with Galois representations and we'll see that manifested in a few different ways. Uh, so that does it uh, for today's video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And again, uh, if you have uh, any questions or anything, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm I'm happy to clarify anything, uh, given that I actually understand it.